Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from Automator, and it's uh, Sunday again, but yet we're here working. Um, I forget what what came up the other day, but as I was like, are you planning to work tomorrow? I'm like, when am I not working? <laughs> yeah, exactly, like, is that a thing? An entrepreneur. Yeah, it's like you yeah. work every day. So um, I ran, this is the what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. I ran the script, and we made a video on this last week because I was using the tool for doing it, and Isaiah said about 20 minutes during the video, made this tool, which... Looks by date and um, for the last modified date across a given path and subfolders recursively and returns it in the list, sorted in a certain way. So really great thing to do with AutoHotKey, right? Um, these first two are really the same thing. So I had a V1 I had done years ago. EDD, Easy Digital Downloads, is the plugin we use on the automator for selling our scripts, for having the downloads and all that stuff. And I had a V1 version in... But I asked Irfan to convert it to V2, so he created it in V2, and then we needed to build it in a way, because before, I was pulling, I think it was like 5,000. I said, give me 5,000, and at the time, this is several years ago, that got everything. Unfortunately, when I read it earlier, it was timing out and saying, hey, you know, we we, we lost the connection or whatever. So yeah. I asked Irfan to use the pagination, put it in a recursive loop, and then we'll pull like 50 or 100 or 500 at a time and page over it because now we have like over 50,000 downloads, um, 48,000, I think, something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, so of the number of downloads we've got. Um, this is the V1 version, by the way. Uh, and so this is an API call, if you're not familiar with them. APIs are freaking amazing. And in it here, I have the token stored in the any file, which is nice, so I don't have to worry about what's on this page. And it... It, this is the endpoint that I tell it to go to. And I can tell it here, I'm saying get one record. Now, I already pulled this one to make sure it didn't have confidential information. And, and I was just randomly picking them until I found one that where someone gave me a bad email address. And I'm displaying it in an object. So I shove it. Where is it? Right in here. Let's see. Here we shove it into this. This is a parse JSON that gets returned and shoved it into auto hotkey object. And then I just display all the stuff down here. So this, in that one API call, we got the um, where was it? The the no, this is the email address of the guy, whoever it was that did it. The date, yeah. so <laughs> customer ID. Now this ID and that that those will be the same across them. I don't know what request speed is. Like I ha I've, I've never I don't know what that is. Well, uh, there that can mean two things. It could be internally when you did the request, how long it took the server to return the data. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, for example. You might make a request that takes them a little like a little time to process, and they would return a lot of data, and they would tell you, "Hey, it took me five seconds you know what? to get that data." Sorry, actually, now that I I look study the data a little, I think you're spot on right because all of these are under the first record. You can see right, that. exactly. They have that's to do under. Their... That's what threw me. I'm like, that wouldn't be under this this one, and it's not. <laughs> No, so, no, that is not under right. that, that. That is the total amount of time yeah. it took for them to finish their request, whatever you requested. Uh, sometimes uh, that might be useful if you're doing a big requests. Yeah. Then you want to know, oh, this is the type of request that we should yeah. do because it take me fifteen seconds, twenty seconds to do. Right, and that was where, like I said, I had this at like a five thousand. Right, level. exactly. Yeah, and it, at the time worked, but um, that was because we had less than five thousand. First off. But now we got like 50,000 almost. So anyway, you get an idea of API calls are amazing. And the reason why this came up, and I'm going to jump to that one instead of going in order, is last week we put a chat bot on the automator. And let's go ahead and show it real quick here. Hope yeah. it works properly. Bring it over. It has been, it has been finicky, right? Um, but it has been answering the questions, the part that I, I haven't seen I see that it usually has troubles with is giving the link, but I don't think it is ChatGPT that is failing at that time. It's the bot that we have. So ChatGPT probably sending the the text with the links, but the chat bot here is not properly displaying them. You see where it says nine source? It means that ChatGPT returned a link and a source but the chat here probably is not linking the word correctly for whatever reason. But we always get that source whenever you do that. So you can ask it questions. Mm -hmm. and later, we're going to keep adding to this, right? But what was interesting was I had initially had an automated um, tool I built 
in a GPT, because I thought the GPTs were the way to go, but the GPTs aren't something you can put on your website. And right. so a little bit of digging, I learned the Assistance API you can use. This um, is one of the examples. So <laughs> It's an elite uh, group. I love it. It's elite. <laughs> it's, that's right. Yeah. The, this is one of the examples that I was saying. Like, you, you do get a source down there. You see that? But the chat, it seems to me that it's not replying or not highlighting the correct word that goes attached to that source. So it seems to me that ChatGPT is answering with the link. It's yes. just that the chat is not really um, but adding it sometimes. During that process where we were playing with the Assistance API, and, and you know it's here, we're like, okay, it's not the best, but it's a start, right? And we did mm-hmm. this in less than a week, right? This was my thing last week. I'm like, let's get this thing on there, and then we'll start optimizing it, and we'll create files. At the time, I said, hey, here's a list of all the downloads we have with the URLs and their title. And we could ask it, hey, do you have a do you have a script that does Excel? And it should say um Yeah, so is are there any scripts that allow you to manipulate Excel? It probably give us the the function library, right? Which is my main one for doing that. Um maybe uh, maybe, yeah. So let's see what it comes up with. Right? Right. Also, there's we're putting we're having and that's some of the stuff in the list is we're gonna add the all the videos, um, the videos and their links to videos. So, so you go up, of... can you go up a little bit? Yeah. Well, there's a video how to automate Excel without a macro. Right. Um, then there's the another video Excel automation. Now, can you ask the question with the, the word download in it? Like, do you have any script? What about a, an exit download? That might give you the script. And that is something that I, I we have to think about. Well, like, where, I, where I'm going with this, though, is right, exactly. I don't know what this does and doesn't do right here. Other than it's not working yeah, kind of like is. it to. Is there, this, is, this is the function library. That so what we learned to. was, hey, it, it doesn't have to just be we upload a file and then we hope it does a good job of replying to you, right? No. One is we can actually give it access to our API and have it query our database and live pull the latest and greatest downloads and all the stuff. So it's not a static thing, right? That got me mm-hmm. really excited. Um, but the second one, which is even more exciting, is you, can, you they have these functions and you can define your own function that's within your app and you can tell ChatGPT like how it works, and hey, when you go there, this is the the format how you how you use that function. These are the parameters, just like you do in programming, right? So you can right. really control how it what it does in a structured way. So we and, can and, also and then the function would return exactly what you wanted to return, which is like right. I want the function to return the data with a with a little thumbnail and then the description and then some some hyperlink. That's what ChatGPT is going to get, and that's what it's going to use to reply to you. So it's going to actually reply right. with the, with the, whatever format you want as well. Because but the point be, being, we would say, hey, does it have this? We're not going to tell it what necessary. Now, maybe at times, if if some maybe, maybe ex, this Excel one is so different, we might say if people ask about an Excel download, give them this one, right? But that'll be the rare exception. Normally, right. if they say, how do I work with the clipboard? We we have several. They might pick from one of the clipboard ones. But after it decides, ChatGPT, then when it goes to report, that's what you're saying. It's like, okay, here's the link to the thumbnail. Here is the, the link to the video. Here is the download, right? And structure it in a way where it's a nice, concise way that we want it you know, um, displayed and, and provided. So that's what I was like, this, holy cow, right? I even, mm-hmm. let me let me bro- bring this over here. I wrote it to, to us in um, Telegram, to us in the hero group. But I was brainstorming on things that you know we might want to do with ChatGPT, and and one of the first ones was a lot of people they get a download or they buy a course and they can't they're like then they write us and say hey I just bought this course but I I didn't get the email right. and we're like I'm like why don't we why don't we exactly say when we get this thing they can go to the chat bot and say hey I I bought the course but I didn't get the email. We can walk them through exactly what to do. Check your spam folder. You know, sometimes, have, and this is the yeah. thing that we eat up a lot of time of like, if they used PayPal and there's a different email address associated with the PayPal account, it uses that one. It sends it to that one, right? Yeah, it's really yeah. annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, it, it, that was one um, 
we can we can also see if they're actually we can check the mailgun API, which is how we send our emails. If they're in the bounce list, this is the really cool thing is I said because I didn't say it here, but the fact is if they're in the bounce list, we can't email them, right? So oh, like, that's true. say, hey, I did this. I can't rep- I have to reply from like my Gmail because I can't email them from the automator because they're in the bounce list. Right. I, I, can't, I can't remove them from the bounce list without them saying yes, remove me from the bounce list. So yeah. um this could go and check and actually live in the chat bot tell them you're on uh, you're 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 yeah. actually bounced, yeah. And would you like to be removed from the bounce list? And if it says yes, it can go ahead and remove it. Right. 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 Basically, the, the interesting part here is that Mailgun has an API. So that right. means that chat exactly. GPT could use all the functions that that API has. Yeah. Exactly. I just have to tell it, yeah, I want to do that, and it should have access to that mailgun right. API. Right. So yeah, it's it's really exciting. And you can see I don't want to go through every one of them, but but I very quickly outlined just a ton of stuff we could be doing right with it. So that's really exciting. Um by the way, here if you haven't seen this, um this video where Math uh Matt Wolf talks about these a bunch of different types of image uh a- AI tools. Um so I downloaded the data and displayed them in an additive tree, which shows you correlations. So if if someone said, if, if, sorry, it's on his his ratings. He gave him a one to 10 rating. So if he said a tool was high in realism, it was also high in the textures of backgrounds. So that's because these are really close together. But if, if they said, um, if he gave him a 10 in realism, the usability was probably pretty low. Why? Because you have to go all the way along this thing to go f- connect those two, right? But things that scored you know, in price scored very similarly in text and image and accuracy, right? If that makes sense. And then I flipped it and said, let's do the same thing on the different tools. So for whatever reason, Firefly 2 is very different than the um, everything else because it's on its own branch. These all four are all very similar. Not a surprise, these two, right? They're both Dolly. Right. Dolly. Those four grouped together and then these three are grouped together. So I thought that was interesting. Um, just I wasn't planning to make a video on it. So I thought, hey, let's just discuss it right here real quick. Let's get back to our list. Um, that that's still part of the on HTML. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this, remove HTML from a, from a... yeah. The um the the API returns back the full stuff in in uh, how I analyzed it in SPSS and it doesn't like HTML. So we need to clean that up. All right. uh, now, when we were looking at this, is the crazy part. So I had used TubeBuddy to go. I had at one point paid like twenty bucks or somewhere in there to be a member and in it you could extract a link to all of your videos and i think it had their descriptions and titles or maybe just the titles and maybe tags but it wasn't a lot right it wasn't the subtitles i can tell you it was not all the whole it was not the whole data but i did that like over a year ago and we had like 1300 videos but we've got another over 100 150 or so right so i was like hey we should have a way to programmatically do this so it's always up to date and so i asked Irfan to start looking at the YouTube APIs. And one, just getting a list of all of your uploads was not easy. Like him and I both played with it for quite a while. We finally worked through it, but boy, it was complicated. Um, and then we wanted to say, now let's get all the tags. Oh, that's a separate API call. Oh, let's get yeah. the subtitles. Oh, that's a separate API call. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're we're almost there where we have a one file that has the title, the date it was published, the tags, the description, which is pretty big, obviously, and then the subtitles, which is really big. But think about that. We'll provide that to ChatGPT all in one, you know, in a data, in some sort of way where it can have that access to it. And if someone says, what are videos where you guys have done string split, right? It would it would know, and it's not just the title, right? It's like anything in there. It can it can you know refer to it, and then as I say, as mentioning, we could have not only the thumbnail, but have it a hyperlink. Maybe even since we'll have the subtitles, we could have it jump to that point in time in the video because some of our videos are an hour long, right, or more yeah. in the webinars. Um, that's going to be really crazy. So that's no, all that, and, and and that's so cool because we have been talking about giving it the API access. Right. That means that you don't have to scrape the whole data and have it in a database if she has access to the api yeah. she could she could search at least we should have an index right but then once we have the index she could search for that video using yeah, the api and get the data just for that video not download everything 
Yeah, but I, I, here's where I disagree in the sense of we have uh, roughly, let's say, 1,400 videos, mm-hmm. right? And that means 1,400 subtitles. When someone asks a question, you know, we want her to know, hey, that oh, yeah, topic yeah. Uh, was mentioned in that one video. And sub- she can't go pull all that data. No, no, no. I, I was not referring to the subtitles, really. I was referring about the video information, like the thumbnail, the title, the description, the tags. All of that, we don't have to download all of that, just the subtitles and the title, basically, or the ID. Well, I, think, I don't, yeah. Yeah, we need to work through how we're going to do it because I think if we build it in a way, we can structure it where it's adding to the file and then it only has to keep track of new stuff, right? And adds to yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. That, that would be kind of like building the, but, and this is my point, not building the whole database at once, which means a lot of API calls, which means money. Probably just build it as it goes. Might oh, be think, a good idea on that. No, but yeah, don't worry. I was just, I was just. Yeah. No, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it, we got to decide. There's, there's pros and cons to each approach. Right, right. exactly. The problem <laughs> is when you bring in those subtitles. Holy cow, that's a lot of data, right? Right. And maybe we, maybe we should have. So here, and this is where we could also think about it of having it as in like a database where mm-hmm. we have the unique ID that goes across them. But again, we, we need to have that file. The subtitles, the subtitles. The, well, the subtitles, yes, I agree with you. We have to download the whole thing. Yeah, so all the subtitles must be right accessible. But right. the other part of them, like uh, other YouTube information thing for each video, that can be pulled as we go. But don't worry about it. I was just... Yeah. Looking at what you said and just came up with no, it. No, it's it's an interesting case because right. it, it has to do with it's really unfortunate that mm-hmm. when you search in YouTube, it doesn't say this how I searched for this, it was mentioned in a video. It looks no, like it just looks at the tag. That's right. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, this is gonna be different, right? Yeah. That we have that other people don't have, and something we can sell to other people if they're interested in having it for their channels. Right. Now here, this is the stuff that you were doing, I think, with the open AI. Yeah, yes. Creating the, um, it's a whole different, now granted, you, I think you said it was similar to our API that we were using for the open AI API. Right. This API is fairly similar, but still a little different, right? Because that's uh, what you learned about the functions. The way how, how I would describe it is they have different endpoints. You have the conversation endpoint, you have the, um, when you completion endpoint and now they have the assistance endpoint so it's a different endpoint i was working with the chat or the conversational endpoint and they are similar to the assistance api but they're fundamentally different on how they work so most of the code i built it what was it in in one day like we worked on it for two days yeah Yeah, half a day or something um because the concept was similar, but I cannot have the conversation with the assistant using my my API because that's the part that is fundamentally different. Because you have to create a thread, add messages to the thread, and then run the thing. It's it's really weird. It's not the same when you're using the chat. So, but that's what I was working on in that particular case. Now, yes. One thing that we were talking through, and we still have to actually have a, a working case of it to, to prove it. But you were mentioning how. Because uh, in our app, we can have in our app, like auto hotkey stuff, we can tell ChatGPT, here's how you, like, oh, let's do an, uh, let's take a screenshot of our computer mm-hmm. and let's find this select category, you know, in, and let's, let's tell it, go find this and tell us where that is. And then when you find those coordinates, hey, tell auto hotkey to send a mouse click there. Right, mm-hmm. like that's at least conceivable where we're having a ChatGPT execute auto hotkey on our computers. Right, that's really really interesting. <laughs> now, uh, um, I was having a conversation with uh, Tank yesterday yeah. regarding that, and he said, "Yeah, but that has been there all the time. Like you could have known that when you and I were talking." Yeah, right. And he was saying, "Like, no, you can just simply tell it to return code, and then you execute the code." Well, and I was and I was seeing. Well, it's it, a little bit of a difference there, but yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the functions a... really allow you to control that format better, right? Like that's, that's what I that's what I think is the key and what I was trying to um, explain. And he said, no, we know about this. Like, and that's when he actually um showed me some examples of uh, companies where which they are definitely 
using AI, and whenever AI wants to perform an action, their app performs the action for ChatGPT, which is basically what we are discussing right now. It's the same thing. So yeah, if we at some point um, uh, decide to go that route, that sounds like a very interesting thing, like having <laughs> ChatGPT run code it's a weird concept in itself, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so this next the clip share, th these are still related to the open AI stuff. Yeah. So skip over them. Uh, clip share, we've talked about that where I can highlight something and hit copy and it'll get, he can choose, Isaiah can choose whether he wants to borrow what I copied, you know, and paste it for himself, which is really cool. Also, I don't know, did you get the notification earlier when you, you wrote me in Telegram and I had written you using our our clip share to say hey you know i'm in zoom i don't know if you saw that but, oh no uh, no i was not in the computer so basically probably that's the reason why i didn't get it right yeah because telegram doesn't always notify you so we're like yeah, that is correct. parts of it so why don't i send them a message um but yeah right. now i don't know what the on i don't you know i see this as a nerf ends library um, on I, its lock not I, sure what that is well i assume it has to do with one of the two, either in, you know, we're adding notifications in our Telegram group to automatically notify people, oh. hey, the hero calls about to start. But we also created an auto hotkey script that they can run on their computer and it calculates the time until the next call and lets them know when it is and this and that. So I'm betting it's one of those two, you know. Mm. Not yeah. Sure. But yeah. Now and this, that's what I mean. That's why I usually go with, hey, the naming convention is very important. Because sure. maybe the, the name on clock does not really convey what it does. Well, the fact <laughs> that it's it's in a, th I, I think it's a function that he's going to use in a lot yeah, of Yeah, exactly, because so, it, it is a library function there. Yeah, so it, it might make sense not to give it a specific name because he uh -huh. wants it purposely generic, right? Oh, uh, well, well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to ask him. Um, the media player, this is where I was telling him, I run this script where every time people join the call, I get notified, not just a ding, but I actually get something on my screen that says X person you know, joined the call or left the call. And I'm like, hey, I have my media player playing music, uh, which we wrote and we've shared on here a couple times. Uh, actually, it's right there. It's, it's a couple down, right? Why don't yeah. we, when someone joins the call, automatically set the volume on my media player so I don't have to turn it down, right? Because it's just always when people join, I'm like, okay, I need to turn it down where I can still hear it, but I can listen to them. Well, that was when I'm like, okay, well, that we're using the media, Windows Media COM object. How do we connect to that COM object from another script or in some way and tell it to set the volume? And it was an interesting one because I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, and that's where we started working through it. And we asked Jeezwig for his ideas. I don't know if you looked at what he he said. He yeah, he I, I read, it. I read it. Yeah, the, and, and he had the same yeah. intuition as I did. Like, hold on, isn't it something that you just connect to the object and that's it? But the problem, to your point, is in certain circumstances you have several instances of the connection of the object. So, which instance do I want to connect to? Is a little bit tricky. Which we solved the issue for. Microsoft's products like Microsoft Office and Microsoft Excel, we have an object from Windows, which by the way, why don't we use that? That that, that should work oh, the same. I just have to give it the title of the window that I want no to window. I, I thought about that. There's no window for that media player. Is that is that gonna matter? Because that's what I, I thought about it. I'm like, no, well, there's no there's no actual GUI. No, no, hold on, hold on. Um, it is not about the okay. GUI, it is about the process. Now we yeah, usually well, refer to the window title with it. But remember that part of the window title is the HK EXE, so I can give it an EXE name. I don't think uh, anyway. All right, well we can look at it. We can we can give it a, a go. But basically, now the question is, if it doesn't have a control or something, yeah, how how can it determine? What's what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. We'll we'll figure that one out. Yeah, it was, an, and actually that brings up now it's not in here. But it was another one I reached out to to Tank and to Gswig and you and Irfan and who else? Actually, I didn't check with Geek Dude, which I should have. But a, a subscriber wrote me and said, hey, 
how can I monitor for a beep for a certain sound? And I'm like, uh, yeah. oh, I've, I've never, I've never tried to do that. That's a very weird uh, concept. Yeah. Yeah. And later I asked a bunch of people and we, we knew there's a, a voice to, you know, you can listen for some, a spoken word, but not yes. a tone. Right. So, uh, but he actually, the, the subscriber said, came back and actually said, oh, I found this. I was like deep note, like D E T note. I forget what it was. I tried to download it. I couldn't get it to install, but um, apparently there's a program that that stays running and will will do it for you. So you can just you know launch it and then wait. It'll it'll notify you when it hears it. So we could bring that back into Auto Hotkey if we care to. Mm, that is but, yeah. I couldn't get it to install though, so I, I don't know. Um, Message Master. That's what we send out the the newsletter with. I I didn't think we made any changes to that, but yeah, I, I use that every week for the newsletter for sending out emails. Um, this course list. During one of our hero calls, we actually updated it. Let me open the folder here. Um, and so what's yes. cool is I can I can run it. And what it does is it says, hey, here, which one do you, I want to, let's just do it for V2 stuff, V2 courses. We should probably say V1 course, V2 course, just to make it clear. Yeah, to make it clear. So if I wanted to make it, to, so this is, this doesn't create the discount that's live. So you can't just go use this, but what it does is it gives me the HTML, which I can then, and let's see here. I'll show you in this tool. I use this tool a lot for, so this is the HTML that that wrote. And here you'll see in here, um, example, right? That's the discount that we just used. And it did a mail, like, I think it was a mail merge, right? It put those all down. Yeah. Now before this learn more here, that wasn't available. Right. And, we gave them, here's where you can get your discounts, but we didn't have an easy way to say, if you want to learn more, you know, go here. So I went through and added the URLs and then said during the hero call, hey, Isaias, go update with our mail merge script to make it change where it offers up both. And because you did it using the Object. format. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the format, format command, yeah. It was so easy um, because because of that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, we just this is the object which has that nested data in there, all layered and stuff. But yeah, I made it really, really easy to just update, um, update it, and then and then I get to go post that either in an email or online or both or whatever, right? So, super handy way to to be able to create discounts and have sales. The list manager, I still see it. It's funny because I don't think we changed that one, but um. This this is where when we get new downloads and see what's changed and they get added to our drip campaign right now that that long drip yes, campaign. Yes, that is correct. Obviously, we made some changes in prompt assistant because we we yeah, well, have, have been working a lot. We fixed some bugs and we introduced more bugs because we fixed one thing and broke something else. No, no. <laughs> but but we did we did we have been working on that a lot. Yeah. So prompt assistant, it's it's the simpler version the of QAP where it does really just sending text, but we actually made it where you can do more. If you care to execute auto hotkey code, you just pass it a, a parameter at the beginning and then you can execute whatever's in your snippet, which is really cool. But um, yeah, it's a great tool um, for just doing very stuff very fast. You can import and export your, your snippets. Um, so you can give them to other people, assign icons. Let me, I'll launch mine. I haven't added a lot to it lately. I've just been really busy. But here's the the interface for it, and then if I hold down the Windows key and right click, you can see this menu. It it, it mirrors this, right? And that's the thing I, I also love is it makes it really intuitive. Um, and so, yeah, I have a bunch of our queries and whatnot in there, so I can keep track of them. But they just they're I use it predominantly for doing snippets, so it's super fast, easy. You can just just click add and. What can you add? You can add a snippet, basically, because it's always snippets. And you can trigger them with, you have your menu, or you can create a hot key or a hot string. But, like, that's almost it. And, and, and it's purposely done that way. So there's that. Um, here's the Telegram bot that Irfan's working on. Yeah. Um, oh, look. Oh, the, yeah, that has to do with the Telegram. That's correct. There it is. This transcript limit. Let me see if I can come up with an example of this. I think so. Actually, let's pick let's pick the non a non automator video. Find something five hours ago. How long is it? Is it well, we need something kind of long because it's oh, that's twenty nine minutes. No, I need something long. Um. Well, mm. okay. So I found I don't even know what this is. Psycho BFF sounds lovely. Um, 
this summarized. Now I pay for this service and, and at some point I might automate it. But when I click in here, it does a summary. It looks at the subtitles and it creates a summary. Oh, and actually I can't, well, I can still do it in site to show. Um, let me get site ready while it's doing its thing. And so boy, that, it was what an hour and a half. Well, that should be done by now. It's basically going through and there's timestamp. This is the cool thing I like it here. So I'm going to go and copy it. And when I come back into here, now notice that's 7,000 characters. Well, YouTube only allows you 5,000. So unfortunately, I can't paste all this into YouTube, even though these timestamps work as chapter summaries. So it, for the that's why when you guys watch our videos on, on YouTube, you have those nice chapters and, and they're intuitive because it, it's summarizing it. Well, I asked Irfan, so let me go to here to launch my YouTube summary. So now when I select this, and I think he has it as control T. There we go. So now, oh, oh, that's interesting. So now I get to show him again something. It still didn't quite it got it really close. Yeah. Somehow it um it it didn't get it down to under five thousand, which is what it, is what it has to be. So what it really so there's be, I think the the problem is having is that it's truncating it to to, to five thousand, but then it's adding or fixing some things. So it should obviously happen first. Right, that's what I'm saying. It should probably fix the things first and then truncate. But it right. seems to me that it's doing it in the wrong order. Yeah, we'll so see. When it fixes it, then it, you get a few characters on yeah. above. It, right. it could be. But anyway, you guys get the idea. So that I use for all of our hero calls because they're all an hour long. And it's always over. Um, and it just saves me a lot of time. But even for other calls and stuff as well, it's nice to have a quick summary and I don't have to worry about how long the thing is. I don't have to manually go back and do it because that's what I was doing. Yeah. So Zoom call the notifier. Is that like no? Well, we have you have that that when somebody joins, it notifies you that somebody joins. Right. You know, right. Yeah. Right. That's that's what I thought. Yeah, and that's where we were trying initially. To... Oh no! Sorry. This is the one that tells you when the Zoom call is right. going to be, isn't? Right. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Um. And then messages zero. All of that is referring to the same script, I think. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. Now, the part this is the one that we were trying to connect. And Irfan started here to try to adjust the volume. And we we tried something really quickly, like with the activate and, mm -hmm. and it didn't work. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. There's because he was leaving the meeting and coming back, and we're like, this is stupid. <laughs> For our testing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, these are Client Thomas, um, which we had a different project with him. But during the call, we kind of came in there, and I think we're looking around a little bit in, in his script. Or he might even made updates to his scripts because they're on Dropbox. Um, but we were doing some stuff there. Uh, this is my main script. This one we actually showed, that's the um, the one that has a little one. That was the one you converted last week. Um, I think it was last week in the hero. Oh, sorry, in, in this call, we manually gave created a V2 version of it for having the menus, you know, visible really quick. Um, this, I don't know what I changed in it, but this is another, this one I've had forever. This is before I knew about QAP. So um, it's this menu, which because I had, this is what I wrote at TI and I, I still use it, but I'm like, I just never taken the time to move the stuff out of it, move it into either QAP or to prompt assistant because it's all done and it works. And I'm like, you know, and it's it's very nested. Like I got a lot in it. So it just would take a lot of time. Each of these things do like different SQL examples in this case. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? It's fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, oh, this is my hot strings. That was before Clipster. And then this is another one with the, um, just the logging in and getting the, the API calls. So yeah, so um, it's been... A busy week. We didn't do as much auto hotkey code because Isaiah, I'm not granting he was using auto hotkey for the um assistance API calls, uh, but that is just gonna be enormous. It's gonna be awesome because not only will at some point it help us with getting more downloads and more purchases, but it'll help the users, right? Because we we have a lot of information on the automator. Like even what do we got over 60 webinars, right? We have over a hundred podcasts, we have 1500 videos um then there's what 11 courses if i remember somewhere in there yeah 12 courses if I remember, right? yeah, yeah. We're working on a new one 
um, right now, which is really not really auto hockey. It's just how to how to use your computer better because yeah. most people in corporate America when I was there, I'd see them using a computer like a typewriter. I mean, it was really crazy the kind of stuff they would do. So, and, and I'm not pointing fingers, right? We all know different things and you get too busy, but um, we're going to have a nice, simple way to learn some of the basic things that can really help you speed up work. Um, I'll try to remember to put the link up here. If you're interested in learning more about it, you can sign up right now and get a 35% discount once it's ready. I think it'll be at least a month probably before it's ready because we got a lot of other stuff going on as well. But yeah, that's um, the starting point of where we are with that. We're good. Yeah. So um, thanks for watching. We're the largest auto hockey channel out there. We released now we're releasing videos three times a week just to get caught up because mm -hmm. um, we just have a lot of videos. And yeah, um, thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.